Hi everyone, this is Chris with Peace of Mind Art and Crafts and welcome to my channel. Today I'm bringing you part two of the slow stitch pattern, the new design that I have called On the Farm. Um, I'll quickly show you the, the pattern. As I said in the first part, this is uh, a copyrighted pattern, so please do not copy it. Um, if you wish to try something like this on your own, that's fine, but you'll have to draw your own pattern and uh, not use mine. If you want to order a kit where the pattern is included, you can go to my Etsy shop and, and I'll have this kit in there um, as soon as I upload this video. Uh, the last time we covered how to uh, trace your pattern onto it some tracing paper, putting the tracing paper over the pattern, and then cut out the smaller pieces, the bigger background pieces. You can just cut to size to fit, and there's three of them. There's the sky, the middle ground, and the bottom, the ground. So you can uh, then uh, trace your other pieces, the mountains, these little hills here, this fabric here for the uh, rock wall, uh, your house, your barn, your tree. Now for your tree I used some of this lace, lace fabric and I'll try to start you out with that. Um, I don't know how long I'll be able to, to purchase this so your tree might have another color in there for, for it. Um, it'll just depend on what uh, what I have at the time as far as what I include in the kit. With my kits, I try to include fabrics that maybe won't be the same, but will be similar to what you see in the pictures. Um, and that is because I can't always buy the same fabrics again that I that I purchased. And uh, some of my kits I've had for two, three years. And as you know, when you go to the fabric store a lot of times you can't find the same the same fabric so uh, here's what I did the first part I showed you how to how to glue down with just a minimal amount of, of glue to glue down the uh, the pieces with just a little bit of the uh, glue stick and that'll work to hold them down you can also pin them if you prefer that. Um, some of the smaller pieces, uh, most of the smaller pieces can just be uh, tacked down until you sew over them. Now there are some places where after you get finished with the stitching, such as maybe these animals, I did stitch over these some of, a couple of these animals to stitch them down in places, but what you can do then is you can use a uh, a white glue, and I use the uh, art. It's called art glitter glue. It really, really holds well. It's it's kind of like a craft glue, but it's as thin as the regular white glue, and it really holds well to hold down. Like say your edges. See here on this uh, on this mountain, I've got a little bit peeking out here after I finished with the stitching. I can just go in there with a little bit of the glue since this will dry clear. I'll just see how I've got a, a piece of thread coming up. I can pull that off and I'll just kind of pat it down to make sure that it that it stays down there. Most of these areas I've glued. Um, I will wait until I finish sewing this sheep on before I glue down the parts that might stick up. Same for some areas of this house. What I did was I did my stitching over the top of the roof here, for example, and then I glued down these, these small areas that, uh, that still, they kind of popped up a little bit, but the glue helps them just adhere down. You can sew down every single little edge if you want. Um, I don't know if I'd recommend that because you probably wouldn't wouldn't like this very much after you got finished. 
but as I've said before, it doesn't have to be perfect. Let's go over some of these stitches and I'll show you how uh, how I did them. Now, here you will see just the straight stitch, the running stitch, where you just go in and out with your thread and needle and um, sew kind of in rows across. And you don't want to do, you don't have to do this across the whole entire piece because some of the areas, like for example on the tree, you'll be sewing down with, with other stitches. Um, and you can go the other way also if you want to create some other different kind of a texture. Or you can go, um, you know, up and down, curvy. Uh, you can also use some other stitches uh, to go across. On here, you'll see, and back in here, You'll see where I did a small, and I'll raise this up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. You can see where I did some stitching to connect one area to another. And this kind of gives it the look of grass or bushes or something growing there, rather than then just sewing this down with a straight stitch. Um, here I ended up, I haven't quite finished this yet, so I'll just continue on and I'll sew the rest of this this down. I'll show you that here on camera so you can kind of get the idea of what that stitch looks like. Oh well wait, I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you another stitch first because I have my thread uh, or threaded over there. At any rate I'll finish that eventually. And I'll just go across over here to the to the silo part of the barn. Now this tree, I used the, the straight trunk that I cut out according to my pattern. And you can either, with your piece of green that you get, you can either cut out these areas here, these kind of puffy tree parts, put them down, and glue them slightly so that they hold until you stitch over them or you can do what I did which is I cut my my green fabric into small squares and rectangles and then just all the way up the tree I kind of tack them down a little bit with the glue and then I used a lazy daisy stitch over the top to look more like the leaves so the background is leaves but then also over the top is the lazy daisy stitch and all the way up since this tree here is in the foreground it goes over the top of the barn which is further back so that makes it look like it's it's smaller of course in the background okay and on here on this tree I used the lace to go up and then I made some branches. I used this this purple, kind of a brownish purple color for the branches just because I liked it and I liked the way it went with, with the brown of the tree trunk. Now I'm going to go in and you can see I have made a few Lazy Daisy stitches on here for the leaves. I'll show you some more here. What you do is you make a you can go on to the inside of your tree or the outside of the tree. Go by where the limbs are. You do a lazy daisy stitch, which is you make kind of a, a circle like this. And you come up in this spot, and then you go back down in the same spot. And you pull it. And you'll see that your thread come is up on the inside of the stitch and you want to go down right near where you came in but on the outside of the stitch and that adheres it down. And you can just leave an open stitch like that, like I did over here. Or what I'm going to do on this side is I'm going to fill in these lazy daisy stitches so that the inside of the leaf is filled in so the look is kind of more like a 
or like a satin stitch. And then I take my thumbnail and I can kind of gently press that down just to make it a little flat so that it blends in with the other part of the leaf. Okay, and I'm going to continue with this all the way across here. I'll do a few more so you can see so you can see what I'm doing. We're coming to the stem, so what I'm going to do on the stem is I'm going to come up. Now these leaves can cross over each other, they can they can cross over the stem. You can just do a few, you can do a lot. Depends on the look you want. Okay. For some reason that didn't that didn't catch, so I'm gonna go outside of the of the loop. <coughs> Excuse me, and then I'm gonna come down to the bottom of the loop and then go on the inside, just make a straight stitch to fill in the middle of the leaf. And the more you get, the more it starts to look like it's um, like it's filling in the tree, and you can change the direction that your lazy daisy stitch goes in, so that at least looks like your leaves are growing out in different directions. I'm turning this now so that I can better see what I'm doing. Sometimes you can just come up. You don't have to go in and then sometimes you just can come up in the same in the same stitch. And I'll show you this one. And then kind of press it down with my thumbnail. Okay, I'm gonna come up on this one. And you can make your lazy daisy stitch as long as you want to make it, depending on how big you want the leaves to look. Okay. Come up. And then go back down on the inside of the lazy daisy stitch. Press it down with your thumb, thumbnail or th your thumb. Now if you're if you've got a wide one like this is, it might even need another it could even use a little uh another little uh piece of strand of thread in there, so I'm going to And these leaves can not only represent just like one leaf, they can re represent several leaves on the on the tree and they kinda they kinda blend together to to look like to look like one. And when my thread is about finished, I'm going to go on to the back, tuck it under a couple of stitches, and then cut it. Now this, it, you'll see this pad that I'm using. This is uh, a pad that's normally used for um, the uh, needle felting. Where you have the needles and you make those little, you can make those little animals and so on and felt, or you can felt different wool flat. What this is, is this is actually wool and it's, it's fairly thick. You can buy them in a thinner surface, but I like it for working on my stitchery to, uh, to put on here and then I can, I can keep my needles up here, my, my, um, pins and needles up here. And that way I don't, lose, I don't lose anything. I have things right here. And also, if I have a strand of thread, like say I used um, a strand of this green. I used um, six, six strand embroidery floss for this. And then I, I, I uh, got it in half so that I don't, so there's only three strands here. So I, that actually will stick down up here if I want to leave it, leave it up there for the second part that I need. 
Okay, so here is the the way I'm going to show you how to make what looks like kind of a field growing across here, a crop maybe, some grass. This is a farm, so this probably not the farmyard is not going to be like grass that's immaculate that you're going to mow or anything. It's it's definitely a farm, so it's probably it's probably dirt and some grass and even weeds growing, but probably mostly dirt because the animals are are in there walking around. Okay, now on this you can make some long, some short some slanted, some straight, so that as you go across they're not all just straight up and down. They'll go in a few, they'll go in a few different directions. See now here's where the silo connects. So I might put just a dab of glue there. I should probably wait till I'm finished. Just a little dab of glue there. Oops. Okay. So. That's how I would do that. Now, to, um, and here down the, the barn, what I did was I just continued this green going across that also went over into the sky and the mountain, or the greenery that's back here. And I am going to tack this down. So, like I said, on the on the leaves for the tree, you'll continue these all the way out. And like, like I also said, you can make any kind of leaves you want. What I plan on doing for, and I will show you if, if we have time in this video, but in the end, I will show you a picture of the, of the finished product, of the finished picture. It will be on the video. And so you can you can see that how I've added the, even more stitches to this. I'll show you the, the finished part. I'm going to use this gray, I think, to make the pillars on this on this house. There's the pillar there, the pillar. To sew them down. I don't know yet if I'm going to do anything with the windows. I might. I haven't decided yet. Now, for the sheep, I did some see some sheep embroidered somewhere that had like little French knots for the for the wool on the sheep, and so I'm going to try to try to do that. See how that works. Um, these these animals are really too small to get too close around them, and um, it worked out that they were. On a green fabric, so that kind of blends in with the with the green uh, lawn. I could just sew around with maybe just one strand of regular thread all the way around, like an applique type of thing. If I wanted to, that's one option. I'm going to try just tacking them down with some French knots on the body. And um, some black thread on the for the legs. I hope you all are doing well. It's October here. I'm in Colorado, and it's still hot. But we've been getting some nice days, some 70 degree days, so that's good.
Right now I'm trying to thread my needle. Okay, let's see what I can do with these with these sheep. I'm not gonna do too many of these because I have to have it in order to get it under the camera. It's a bad angle for me to sew with. I like to have it closer to me. Okay, so the French knot, you come up and you go around. I'm just gonna go around twice with this because I don't want it to be too heavy looking. And since this fabric kind of has like little white speckles in it, I don't have to do it totally all over the whole sheep. Okay, so wrap it around twice. And the more the more times you wrap it around, the bigger your French knot will be. Then as you go down, you're going to hold that with your thumb in the center. And this, you do, get, you do get that tangle here every once in a while, so you have to, have to, I, I try to go a little slow so it doesn't, doesn't tangle up quite as much. And then I also squeeze that down a little bit with my thumb. And you can go back and flatten these out. Yeah, I think I like that look. I think that will look really cool. I went around three times that time. Let me see if that makes it any bigger or not. Uh, I held it tighter, so I think it's I think it's fine. So I'll hold this up so you can see how it's looking. And I'll probably fill in around in there maybe five or six more times. And then maybe a couple times on, on the, the sheep's head. For this one, the one that's kind of more brownish, I might just leave that one the way it is because it kind of stands out already. And um, for, for the white ones, I might use just a little black thread to come up and and go down a couple of times for his leg to stand out more. So now I will be I will be finished. I am going to probably and you'll see that in the, the final picture. I don't know if I'm gonna use this red or not I might use this this red. Do some French knots over here in this area in the grass for flowers. I might do some atop of these little tiny stitches that I used for the grass. This might be stems for flowers and then I can just put some, some flowers over here. Possibly some over here too in the yard. I'm not sure yet. But you can add whatever you want on yours. Um, I do usually include some seed, seed beads. Oops. There you go, I'm starting again. I ran out of battery, so I'll connect these two videos. As I was saying, for the flowers, you could use little beads and stuff that I send in with the with the kit. Uh, you could add buttons somewhere, you know, just whatever you wanna whatever you wanna add to it. It's your choice. I hope you do well with this with this uh, project and this will be on my Etsy shop 
as well as all my other kits. If you'd like to see all my different kits, just go to my channel and um, type in a playlist. And there is a playlist for all the different videos that I have on the slow stitch kits. So you can watch that. And you can also go to my Etsy shop and where I list each kit separately. So I hope you'll visit me there. Please also give me a thumbs up if you liked this video. And uh, of course to give me a thumbs up you'll need to um, become a subscriber. And I'd appreciate that also. Thanks so much. Peace of mind.